Hi everyone, Michael Anfield here. Thank you for joining me. So, this is a follow-up question to the other pet issue video that I just recently posted on YouTube. Well, what are we actually going to do with the pets? The ones that are already in existence and the ones that are in pounds and laboratories. If we are here as vegans just just to promote veganism, to share the vegan message with others, what's going to happen with all the animals that are already in existence? There's so many ethical issues out there that we cannot solve, we cannot fix. And the reason is because we're now in a, in a process of transforming this world, this herding culture, into a vegan world. So from the herding culture to the vegan world, there is unfortunately going to be a lot of killing, a lot of murder. So there's really no sensible solution. Now, one thing is if vegans already have pets and they understand that the idea is not to have any more pets not to bring any more animals in this world some people will be like well you know but i love pets and i love this and that people will still justify but in the end we should not have any pets we should not breed any more animals and when we don't breed animals listen when we don't breed animals eventually there will not be pets there will not be cows there will not be chickens Maybe the odd few here and there for people that are still supporting the industry. But basically, once we stop breeding all animals for food, for pets, then those animals will cease to exist eventually. Now, that may not be in our time. So the whole idea is if you have already pets, if you have already companion animals, to do our best to make sure that we don't harm any other animals. So unfortunately, even though feeding them vegan is not truly ethical, because that's not their naturally tended diet, at least we're not killing any further animals by feeding them vegan food. So we have to feed them the best vegan food that we can possibly. And there are a lot of different vegan uh, pet food companies out there, like Evolution, for example. And we need to know how to properly feed them, because no matter what, we cannot just feed them the dry food and that's that. That's the end of story. No. There's a lot of things that uh, have to be researched and, and figured out before we start feeding our companion animals vegan food. Because there's, in nature, no one, no one animal eats dried food. They eat wet food. They're eating blood. They're eating the flesh and the secretions from animals which are full of water. It's all there. To do our best, if you have companion animals, and to understand not to breed and not to adopt and not to rescue animals. And after that, to promote veganism. So to do our best to make sure that the animal is safe and secure and as happy as possible. We don't know their total feelings and total drives and whatever. So we need to do our best when we have the companion animals and understand that once the companion animal passes away to their next life, that we are here to spread the vegan message and to stop furthering the breeding, the rescuing, and the um, adopting of animals. What will happen to all the other animals that are in pounds and laboratories? Unfortunately, they will be either euthanized or they will be ground up to be put back into pet food. And that is the unfortunate reality because we live in a non-vegan world and unfortunately, we see animals as property. And when we are transitioning again, an animal-based diet world to a vegan paradise one day, this period from now to, to the Garden of Vegan, that will unfortunately, there will be a lot of animals that will, that will be killed. We just have to understand that there is no good solution. And because people think, oh, there's no good solution, so let's just do the best that we can. And the best that we can is not to adopt and to rescue because that way, again, we're throwing money out the window where we could be utilizing that money for vegan advocacy. And if we want a vegan world, we promote veganism, plain and simple. And people say, well, you know, you think it's all or nothing. And it's like, yes, it is all or nothing. If you want to put on your shoe and tie your shoelace, you, you do that. You tie, put on your shoe and tie your shoelace. Just like if we want a vegan world, we promote veganism. It's so simple. And people just don't get it because they are still justifying using animals. And a lot, of, a lot of vegans are continuing to justify the use of animals. And root cause is not solely factory farming. It's not solely about pet industry. It's not solely about circuses and rodeos and these sorts of things. What the problem is that people never seem to understand is that we see animals, not human animals, as property, as commodities, and food. 
these are two things. But still, the animal is legally, according to law, legally property. Okay? We see the animal as something to be used. And we might say, no, that is wrong. We don't see the animal as something to be used. And that is absolutely not true because we see the animal as fluffy, as furry. Oh, it's they're so cute. And we pet them and we take them out on road trips and we do this and we do that. But ethically, there are a lot of problems to owning them, to having them in our midst. Again, like I mentioned, there's a problem of when you go to work, they're home all alone. They are totally dependent on you. And so when you're out for eight hours at a job and you come home, they have to wait that eight hours before they can go to the washroom. If their litter box is so full that they can't go to the washroom, then that's another ethical issue. Where are they going to go to the washroom? A lot of ethical issues to uh, neutering and spaying the animal because you violate their rights. They have no say, so you, you know, chop, chop, chop. You, they have no rights, so you just do whatever you want. Oh, yes, it's in their best interest not to breed. But you know what? They have no say. I don't want you to breed anymore because I don't want any more animal, any more pets in this world. But guess what? How can they breed if the dog is not going out without a leash? So how is the dog going to have sex with another dog if you don't give them that chance? In this case, why would you need to spay or neuter them? And in other cases, you're violating their, their, their rights. In nature, animals would reproduce. Our focus should be to promote veganism. So I hope this was uh, informational for you and you learned something from this podcast. I am very thankful for you joining me. Please like this video, share it around with everyone you know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to get my books to buy them for their birthdays or for Christmas or Hanukkah or any other special occasion. And once again, I thank you for joining me and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye everyone.